that's way better. That's way better than the genetic lottery. So if you've got downfalls, if you are short, if you are bold, if you are ugly, you've hit the fucking jackpot. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to overcome being short, bold, ugly, anything else that wasn't your fault. You know, you got given these things genetically, you were predisposed to going bold. Genetically, your family is short, you're short. Maybe you don't have the best genetics and you're ugly, you know, and you're worrying about, will I get women? Will my life be good? I'm panicking. I'm telling you now, you can't change these things. You can change the ugly thing with orthotropics. You know, height is pretty much locked in place. Being bold, you know, your lifestyle is going to contribute to it. But if it happens, guys, take it on the chin, get over it, move forward. These are things that you can't really alter, okay? They're kind of locked in place. You're going to have to kind of put up with them and just do what you can to move forward. But here's why it doesn't matter. Here's why you should not give a fuck about being the short guy and wondering if you can get girls or not. About being the bold guy and being like, oh, God, is this bold hair going to stop me having the life that I want? Are people going to laugh at me? A girl's not going to want me because I've got a bold head, you know, or I'm slightly ugly. Maybe I've got big ears like me. Maybe I've got a, a hook nose like the Roman nose, which actually comes from orthotropics if you look into it. It's to do with having a weak jaw, maxilla falls down, this curves to compensate because the face turns. So you can do something about that. But um, just having the sort of traits that you can't do anything about, okay? Here's why it doesn't fucking matter. is because there's so many other areas of life that you can tick to compensate. So you know those guys that buy like a big fast car and women always say, oh, he must have a small penis. You always hear that, right? Or other guys, it's usually other guys that say it. Like Dan Bilzerian, everybody says Dan Bilzerian must have a little dick. Or when he had skinny legs, everyone was like, oh, he's only got all these women around him and stuff because secretly he's a beta male and he's just doing bench press every day. People become haters, but you have to compensate for these other areas of life. So if you're short and you're worried about people taking you seriously, getting women, etc., you think it's going to be a downfall in your life. Let's say you're five foot six and you're worried. Okay. Let's have two scenarios. Here's a guy, he's six foot four. Not bad looking guy, average face, whatever, average body. Maybe he's in good shape, you know, maybe he's an attractive guy. Let's say he's stupid. Let's say he's got no money. Let's say he's got no drive, no focus, no motivation. He's got nothing really going for him. He's not cultured. Um, you know, he's got all these faults in life. And yeah, he's going to get sex once or twice off women. You know, they're going to be like, he's tall, he's hot, whatever. They're going to they're gonna sleep with him. Now let's look at the other side of the coin, but but rarely, it's going to happen rarely, because this, guy, this guy's a dick, right? Who would you rather be, this guy or this guy on the left? So you're five foot, you're five foot six. You're bold, not the best looking guy in the world. But on top of that, stupidly motivated, worked your balls off in your 20s, and now you're 32 years old, and you've got 70 million in the bank account. Let's, well, I'll tell you what, let's make it realistic. Let's say you've got something like seven million in your bank account or even 700,000 in your bank account, that's very good. You've got a really good bunch of assets. You've got a nice car. Let's say you drive a Panamera, I think that's pretty achievable for a lot of people. Let's say you've got your own house, mortgage paid for. Let's say you've got a holiday home as well. Um, let's say you've managed to get yourself in, you know, five foot six, but you've got yourself in ridiculous shape, a really, really nice body. Let's say you dress well. Let's say you've got great hygiene, you're well-groomed. Um, let's say you're polite, intelligent, well-mannered, you know three languages, um, you know, you take care of those around you, you're a family man, you're always nice to those around you, you're a fantastic cook, you know, you're well read, you read two books a week or something like that, you're doing orthotropics, so you're still a handsome guy like a Tom Cruise type. Um, basically, guys, what I'm getting at is being short compared to those other fucking 50 traits means nothing. Oh, he's a little bit short. But look at what else you're getting in return. You know, it's like buying a, it's like buying the best product on the market and being like, oh, it's got all the best features. It's the best product you could possibly buy. But the price is a little bit high, so it puts me off. Or, you know, but they only do it in purple. Ah, I don't want it. It's like, I'm fucking buying it. I don't care. If this was a pink mic, but it was the best mic on the planet. I'm buying it. You know, it, my new camera that I bought, if... When we do the streaming platform, I'm going to go and buy like probably a 10 grand camera to get that done because I want it to look fantastic. If that camera had sparkly pink flowers on it, 
I don't care. I'm buying that camera. It's the best camera for the job. I don't give a fuck. You know, that one bad trait, which is kind of a stupid one, just a bit of height. Um, I don't care. I'd still buy it anyway. And a lot of women will do the same. And a lot of other guys will do the same. I used to work with a guy who was, he used to call himself this. He used to say he's a short, fat, bold Indian man. And he was. But he was the most confident man I've ever met in my life. The funniest man I've ever met in my life. He's worth about 10 million. He ran his own company. Super intelligent guy. You know, best motivational speaker I've ever heard. Salesman through the roof. One of the best salesmen that's ever lived. Could talk, you know, any woman into bed. He had an attractive wife, you know, had kids, had a great family house. And he'd managed to do whatever he wanted to do in life. And height had meant nothing. He always said every woman's the same height led that. And, uh, you know, with that, I, I, with that mentality, it's got in places in life. You know, he's got all these other traits. Dresses well, you know, has nice stuff, nice car, whatever. The women are going to look at that and be like, I, I don't care if he's five foot six or five foot seven, whatever, and bold. And, you know, look, if, there's, if he, the only fault he had was he wasn't in shape, but he was training. He was in the gym. He was doing boxing. He was lifting weights and stuff. Had he had ticked the in shape box and just had like the perfect body, this guy's a 10. This guy's a 10 out of 10. I don't care if he's short and bold. He is a 10 out of 10 because all the other traits added together culminated make him a 10. And they compensate. So let's, and here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing you need to be super happy about is the guy who's the Chad, who's born, I know the Americans say this a lot, or in the UK, you know, get a guy who's six foot four, born with great genetics, lovely hair, you know, maybe he looks like he's from. Norway or something, he's got those Scandinavian genes and women love him, blonde hair, blue eyes, big muscles, six foot four, family, he comes from a family of wealth, he's going to have a good life, you know, it's never going to be bad for him, but he's going to get lazy, he's going to get lazy, he might be the guy that ends up being fat in the future or, you know, has terrible narcissistic traits or ends up not making his own money or does a lot of drugs because he's just like, I don't give a fuck, you know, life's too easy for me, the guy who actually has downfalls is usually better off, it's like, Every cancer patient seems to know more about cancer than the doctors because they give a fuck. They want to research it more because it's their own life. Any guy who's going bold seems to know a little bit more about hair loss and why it happens than hair loss surgeons. Any guy who is short or ugly seems to know more about attracting women than good looking guys because they study it more. And this is why these downfalls are actually blessings in disguise. Like when I was losing my hair, I'd, I'd I panicked so much and I thought, fuck, what's going to happen? Over the period of like a year or two, once I shaved it, I started to realize, I was like, if I just get in great shape, if I'm a successful guy, if I have all these other traits that I mentioned to you guys a minute ago, I was like, what is being bold? It's just a, it's a bit of hair that's missing. You know, I'd look at somebody like Jason Statham, Vin Diesel, was, The Rock, you know, all these guys, it hasn't affected their careers or their life or whatever. And there's so many good looking bold guys out there in the world or not even good looking but successful bold guys that have built an amazing life who are functioning just fine and you think it's a little bit of hair what is that why is that a problem or you know you're an ugly guy but you're in fantastic shape and you've ticked every other box in life you know you you've you've t you, you've done it guys you've hit the you've hit the jackpot because you have something that you have to build on or something that you have to compensate for you have a reason to improve that's the biggest blessing you could ever have because it gets it's the motivator to get you in the gym you know when you're already at the top it's easy to get lazy and just take a break or take a couple of days off it's like anybody who's broke ends up becoming super successful like people who grow up in the mud end up becoming the billionaires you know it's never the people who grew up in the middle class or whatever or very rarely is it there's a lot of self-made people that came from the mud um there's a lot of short guys who sleep with a ton of women or have the best confidence or the best body language or they're the best at sales or something because they're compensating. They've had to learn to evolve. It's like hot women. Most hot women are quite dense. They're quite, they're quite basic because they haven't had to evolve. People are talking to them. They haven't had to develop like a personality or a certain level of intelligence because they can just get by on their looks. And as a man, if you've got pitfalls, if you've got downfalls, you're lucky. Because you have something to improve upon. You have a motivating factor. You have all these other traits that you could tick the box of. And you could put them in place. Um, it, it, you can replace them with the other traits. And it, let's be honest, guys, as well. Who wants to be the tall, good-looking guy, you know, with great hair and whatever, who's getting women 
because he exists. You know, maybe a few people do. Maybe it would be easier. It would be nice. You know, a lot of us would tick that box and be like, this is nice. This is easy. But wouldn't you rather be getting women because of the man that you are? You know, given both choices, wouldn't you rather sleep with the same woman as the bold, short, ugly guy who's managed to tick every other box in life and has earned that woman? You know, she's now looking and going, I, he's, he's just such a good guy. I just can't turn him down. You know, that's, that's the kind of man that I want to spend the rest of my life with. Yeah, this guy's super sexy. He's great for a one night stand. But this is the guy. You know, he, he is one hell of a man. Like, that's what you want to hear. You want to hear other guys be like, fair play, he worked hard to get to where he is. You want to hear other women, other, you want to hear women say, what a man. You know, he has built himself from the ground up and that is sexy. Now you're getting women for the right reasons. Now you're getting respect from other men for the right reasons. That's way better. That's way better than the genetic lottery. So if you've got downfalls, if you are short, if you are bold, if you are ugly, you've hit the fucking jackpot.